Hello, everyone. Thank you, Rika, for the introduction. And hello, Lean Agile Global Mass. I had to say it. I've always wanted to say that. I couldn't resist. Hi, 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 hi. Um, I guess I should tell you a little bit about me before we get started. And I really mean a little bit because I only have 30 minutes and it goes really fast. And I don't want to spend time telling you my bio when I could be telling you more in interesting and exciting things. This is me out in the world. They call me Diversity Dana because I focus on all things equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. But I was not always Diversity Dana. When I moved to the UK from Trinidad, that's where I'm originally from, I worked in consultancy helping organizations be more agile. So in a way, I think you could say that agile was my first love. And it's my experiences in consultancy that led to me getting interested in inclusion and doing the work to bring about equality and equity to make the world of work better for other people until it became my career. So one thing wouldn't exist without the other. I also think that when you're used to being agile and it's how you see the world, it's not just something that you can drop and stop doing and, and stop being, it stays with you. And so what that means is that now as Diversity Dana, I get to sound really, really smart saying things like, why don't we ask people what changes they'd like to see instead of doing what they think is right? Or let's focus on getting a working version with all the bells and whistles that we can show to people and make sure we're on the right track. Or instead of waiting for all this to be done, why don't we build it section by section and get people's feedback and everyone thinks I'm a genius. I blow their minds, there's rapture. Okay, there isn't rapturous applause. That only happens in my mind, but I love the blending of the two worlds. It's pretty cool. And now that you know a little bit about me, I have to address the elephant on the Zoom, which is the pandemic version of the elephant in the room. And that is this. I might talk to you while this is happening. And by might, I mean definitely will. I won't do it a lot, I promise, but it does help me to feel less alone, like I'm talking to someone. But listen, if you're not into it, if your conference experience involves you just sitting there and soaking up the knowledge, that's cool. You do that. You do you. No pressure. But if, on the other hand, you did feel like chatting back, uh, you could use the chat box because there are lots of us on today's session and mute on mute could really bring the drama that we don't want. Um, if you're especially chatty, you don't have to wait for me to talk to you. You can just do the thing, right? Just chime in. I'll have one eye on the chat throughout. So pick your approach. There's going to be something for everybody. Just join in. So with that out of the way, I want to tell you a little bit about why I'm here. It's a really good story. I am here because last year at Lean Agile Global, this very same conference, I got big mad, like mad, like raging, like steam coming out of my ears. And I wrote to Jose at the end of the conference and I said, dude, what the hell? OK, I didn't say that. Uh, my first draft of the email said that. But everyone knows you don't send your first draft. So what he did end up getting was something like love the conference. But when it comes to women in agile, let's do better next year. And Jose being Jose was like, yes, we will. And I trust you'd help. And that's how I got this job. He held me to it a year later. Now, you might be wondering what made me so mad. Well, there was a session on women in Agile, which was supposed to be a safe space where interested parties could kind of gather and talk about overcoming issues affecting women. Now, the session was open. It was open to allies. So while there were mostly women present, there were also some men, which I found really, really encouraging. I was excited to attend. I wanted to see if and how 
things had changed and get my finger on the pulse of what was happening. Here is a depiction of us on the screen as the session started. We're innocent. We're smiling. We're ready for a chat. We don't know what's coming. Um, wait, before I go any further, I need to tell you the names on the screen have been changed to protect the innocent and not so innocent. The only names I kept the same were mine and Jose's. So please bear that in mind as I tell the story and do not go accosting people at the conference to find out if this is them I'm talking about. It's not, okay? So we're all there in the session and we're doing the thing. We had limited time, so the facilitator of the session had this really brilliant idea that we should all write what we wanted to talk about on digital post-its, on Miro, and then we would vote and discuss the most popular items. Cool, great plan, I was into it, we're there on the Miro. And then while I was still forming my thoughts, the first post-it went up. Does anyone want to guess what the first post-it said? Jose, that does not include you because you were there. So what did the, <laughs> any guesses about what that very first post-it said? Remember, no pressure, I will totally tell you the answer, but if you had any thoughts, you could type them in as well. Cat, stop taking photos. <laughs> Dana, you weren't supposed to be looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. Okay, so Premalap is like, ah, okay, we need to follow the meritocracy. Evelyn is like, why do we need this session? Ding, 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 ding. Totally, that was it. I'm paraphrasing. It was like something like this. Why is there even a session like this? Is this still relevant in 2020? Is a session for women more divisive than helpful? Ma, 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 well, Okay, you can still tell I'm a bit pissed off a year later. And I'm not gonna lie, I went into my full rage fantasy at that moment. I pictured myself in a boxing ring, knocking someone out. I didn't even know who I was knocking out because it was anonymous and you couldn't really tell. Okay, fine, I lied to you, I lied, I'm gonna own it. That is not my rage fantasy, this is. I mean, but how do you get a lightsaber in this day and age? You can't. I mean, if you can, someone should tell me. So I had to settle for the unreal, the more realistic rage fantasy. So this one. So I was mad. I was so mad. I calmed down now. I promise it might not sound like it, but I have. And I realized that we might still be in this space where we're thinking about why do we still have to think about this in 2021? And to answer, I am going to take you with me on a trip through time. Are you ready? Hold on to your horses. And listen, I had many uh, stories and examples to choose from, but I picked my absolute favorite one. And while I'm talking, if anything resonates for you, sounds familiar, you feel like sharing something, please do. And if you don't want to, and you just want to listen, that's fine as well. So here we go, our trip through time. At some point during my career in consulting, I got promoted to manager and I had to step up officially and mold the young minds of those less senior than me in the organization, as you do, right? I took a junior consultant with me to deliver a client presentation. He had a few small bits of the presentation to lead. Very exciting for him, but it was largely me speaking, right? So we explain to the client who we both are, we our roles, we outline our expertise, and we start doing the thing. So just to be clear, I have maybe three times more talking time than him in the presentation, and it's clear that I'm leading. <laughs> so um, it's happening. We're doing the thing consultant by which I mean in consulting, in a consulting firm, right? Um, and we're talking and they would still, still address questions to him when both of us are there. And I'm using the term consultant because remember, we're going back through time. And this is literally what the guy's job title was in those days, consultant. That was the job title. So I'm telling it like it is back through time. So it was like I wasn't there, right? 
And at the start, he would say something really, really gentle to hand over to me. Like, I'm sure Dana has the answer to that. Dana can totally answer the question for that, whatever. But the questions, they still kept going to him. And at one point, I think maybe he was exasperated or frustrated or whatever. And he said loudly and firmly, I'm a consultant. Dana is a manager. She's standing right there. Why don't you just ask? Not in an angry way, but just in a frustrated way. And I think in the moment, I was very much taken aback. I did give him some side eye because in those days, you know, client was king. Um, and I kept my smile on and I kept going. And we were leaving and I was talking about it to him. And I will never forget. He said, do you have to deal with this all of the time? And I said, not all of the time, but a lot of the time. And he said, doesn't it make you mad? And it didn't. It didn't. I had gotten so used to it that it didn't even make a dent anymore, which is a bit sad. But you know what? You might not be convinced by that story. Maybe you're thinking they didn't come to me with questions because I wasn't coming across well. There was something wrong with the way I portrayed myself. It might be on me. Or you might be thinking, Dana, why have you dusted off this old story? You haven't worked in the agile space for a while. This is the past. Things have moved on since then. So let's skip ahead, shall we? Let's skip ahead. We're skipping ahead. We're back in our time machine. We're going ahead a little bit. And we're skipping ahead to 2020. Let's go there. So at the start of the pandemic, I was contacted by the leader of a team. They were based at a client site, helping the client learn to be agile. He contacted me and he said, Dana Juan Kenobi, you're my only hope. He didn't say that. He did not. That was in my mind. What he said was, we're having some issues with inclusion. I have no idea what's happening. Can you help us figure it out? So, fuck. To do that, I decided to sit down with each member of the team and find out. And some of the women on the team said things about not being heard. So, for example, I feel really underutilized, demoralized, overlooked. I have no voice. My thoughts and opinions are useless. Or there was Kate, there was Rachel. Guys, names change to protect the innocent again, right? So don't go stalking the Katies and the Rachels. I have literally stopped talking in meetings because it's clear no one wants to hear a single thing I had to say. And there was more of the same, but then there was Josh, again, not his real name, and he told me about a game that he'd been playing. Sometimes in meetings, he would say the exact same thing that his colleague Katie had said after she said it. He started doing this because he realized that Katie had really good ideas and she was mostly ignored. And when she spoke up with her ideas, crickets, but when he spoke up with the same idea, he would get told good idea, good initiative, sometimes in the same meetings, literally within minutes of the previous interaction. And it happened time after time and he kept doing it and no one noticed. He also told me about a conversation where the team was discussing who should step into a client relationship type role. And the discussion was basically that any member of the team who was male could do it. And he acknowledged that really two of the women already had amazing relationships with the client. And it seemed like a no brainer, but that wasn't happening. And that story should be enough to convince you. But I mean, I know some of you might be thinking 2020 was last year, and this is a whole new year. So maybe we did need to talk about it in 2020, but this is 2021. So much has happened. The world has changed. Let's move on. And to that, I say, hold on a second, because right as I was getting ready to do this keynote, I taught to myself, Dana, you need to go and validate some of this stuff in your overall message. So I started by hitting up lots of my friends who work in the space and also some randos from LinkedIn. And I had lots of discussions with them and they mostly looked like this because they were on an evening, right? And we were chatting. And I have to tell you, sometimes it felt like I was having the same conversation over and over, but here are some of the standouts. I am going to have to read now because yes, I she want is. To the, right? Every quote Intense. is from a in woman who I spoke to 
and I'm going to share some of them, right? So here they are. The first one is, at the start of the pandemic, my manager told me, it will be interesting to see how you manage to get your job done now that you can't just wiggle around in your short skirts and bat your eyes to get what you want. Another one was, even though the client specifically requested me on a piece of work, they fought to get my male colleague on the job instead because he was a better fit than I was, whatever that means. During the pandemic, only female members of staff were placed on furlough. They acted like we should be grateful as it freed up time for us to manage our home and childcare responsibilities. I live alone and have no children. I recently found out that I am one of the lowest paid people on my team, despite in many cases having equal or more experience and really strong and positive feedback. And side note, I really felt this one because it has happened to me, this last one. I remember when I first started doing contracting work, I got put on a job in the middle of nowhere to deliver training to loads of people. I was the only woman on the team. That was normal. And I remember we had a pretty rough day and we were in the hotel bar drinking our sorrows away when one of my coworkers made a joke like on days like this, the thought of the X amount of money I'm earning is what keeps me going. And we were all laughing. But then I thought to myself, holy shit can't say a bad word on the Zoom. That's how much you're making? Because I was making maybe two thirds of that. And before you even start with me, we had similar levels of experience and we started contracting for that company in the same week. And, and, and I had better feedback than him, client feedback. But you know what? This is not even about him because I'm pretty sure most of the guys I was hanging out with had no idea that we weren't on the same rate. And so when I contacted head office to inquire, I found out that the person who decided on starting rates, by the way, who was a woman, often used a lower starting scale for women than men. It was one of her little quirks. People knew about it, talked about it, not to me, obviously, or I would have negotiated harder. Uh, they talked, but clearly it didn't matter enough to get it sorted out. I did get my rate adjusted. But I will never forget how that felt. And despite the new rates, I didn't work for them for very long after that. Is that enough to convince you? I hope it is, because I need to add that these conversations weren't all doom and gloom. They weren't all doom and gloom. I went back and I had a look and the ratios were four to one. So for every sad and horrible story, I got maybe one nice one. And I've included two of these because I think, you know, we need to think about the positives as well. And one says, I'm really happy in my current team. I feel valued at work and everyone is amazing. There is great work-life balance too. Don't forget to tell people that this is possible. Contracting has been a mixed bag for me. I have absolutely had some bad experiences over the years, but for me, the good has outweighed the bad, mostly because I'm now confident in myself not to stand for it when things get bad. And so I thought those were some positives that I wanted to add. Just looking quickly at the chat, I um, really encourage, really encourage um, by people stepping up to, to share their stories. Lorna saying that uh, she found out she was being paid 30% less and was told that's the way it was and to suck it up. Um, people saying they're not shocked at all. Are we in 2021? These are shocking, right? They are shocking. And the point is that they are happening right now, right now, right in front of us. But also, here's this last quote, and I just wanted to put it in. It said, Women can be just as guilty when it comes to toxic workplaces and attitudes. This is something we all need to solve together. And I've put this one in because I agree. I agree. I absolutely agree with this. And today, 
I am not just speaking to men. I'm not. And I hope that you did get this, right? I said in the intro to the session that this, this isn't supposed to be a telling off, a finger pointing, a shaming. But what it is supposed to be is a chance to talk openly about, about things that are real, right? Uh, it's not even so much about who is doing the do, but it's more about how we as a collective, all people, all of us who work in this space can do better and help to solve. And listen, this is going to shock you, mostly because I look so young and fresh, but it's been 15 years since I started my career in Agile. How is some of the same stuff that was happening 15 years ago still happening now? And yes, yes, I know that some of the issues that I raised affect all people. I know that there are men being bullied at work. There are men who are voiceless at work, overlooked, not being paid fairly. And it's not men, it's people, right? Because the world isn't binary, men and women, right? So uh, correct my language. There are people outside, right? But the fact remains, the fact remains that women are disproportionately affected here. And... Guess what, though? When we solve for one group, we often solve for many others. That's the beauty of this, right? We solve for a group and those things make the world better for everyone else. And so what am I asking? What am I asking from you? Well, I narrowed it down to five things. And the first thing is that we acknowledge that the way that you, the individual, see and experience the world is not the same way that everyone else sees and experiences the world. Like it is entirely possible to work for the same organization in the same team and have completely different experiences from someone else in that team. So just because you've never seen bullying or you haven't witnessed any discrimination or sexism or whatever does not mean that it's not happening. I can't stress this enough. It doesn't mean that it's not happening. And just because you are having the bestest time at work does not mean that everyone else is. It doesn't mean that everyone else is. And then two, once you accept that your reality might not be the only reality, it would be really good to seek out people's other, other um, experiences and perspectives. But as you seek them, listen and accept people's truth. Hear people when they're telling you what their truth is. I, I am begging you, when someone is telling you their truth, please resist the urge to play devil's advocate. The devil has enough advocates. He does not need your help. I don't know him personally, but I don't think he does, right? I mean, I think we hide behind this devil's advocate role in a lot of ways. And yes, sometimes it's great to challenge and give an opposing view, but not at the risk of silencing, invalidating and trolling people, especially when it takes all of their strength and courage to speak up. Why do we do this? Why do we still do this? Point number three is paying attention. Pay attention. One of the biggest things I hear in my line of work is, I didn't see that. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. This, this team in, in this place? Stop. Start paying attention. Look out for signs of exclusion. Look out for unfairness and look out for discrimination. Start seeing it around you. Open your eyes. And when you do see it, act, take some action to bring about change. What I'm not going to do is describe is prescribe a list of actions, because actually the right action in a particular situation is something that is really nuanced and contextual. The what I'm asking, what I'm asking is that you take an action that you feel safe about that can bring about change. Right. Uh, I see people are loving my the devil has enough advocates that makes me smile all the time as well. Um, for the slide graphic here, I've brought back Josh from earlier who started playing a game where he would repeat his co-worker Katie's exact point uh, to show how he was praised. But here's the thing about that story. Josh wasn't doing anything to bring about change. 
He really wasn't, not at all. No one was listening. He, in his own words, was playing a game, but the game had no stakes for him, right? Now, if he had gotten the praise and said, yeah, don't thank me. Katie is actually the one who just said that and you ignored it, or words to that effect. If he did that uh, to shine a light and kept doing it. So, yeah, that was Katie's point. You missed it again, that kind of thing. He could have brought about some change, but he didn't. He made it into a game. And Ray says, give up on fear to act. And that's what I'm saying, right? We have to step up. We have to start doing more, whatever that looks like for us in the context. And by the way, while I said I'm not prescribing, I would love it in general if we were more open about salary ranges so that people who struggle with negotiation like me kind of come into situations with an even footing but you know what I'll leave that one there I didn't make it a point but I just wanted to say it and so that brings me to point number five which is be open to different solutions be open to different solutions right this last one is really really personal for me and to explain it I'm gonna go back to last year's lean agile global uh my angry situation that same woman in agile session so you'll be unsurprised to hear that we did not use the limited time we had to discuss whether or not there was an issue. And we decided to actually discuss some issues. And one of the issues we chose to talk about was how to be taken seriously. And really, this was about that feeling, real or perceived, that as women, we need to list our every qualification before a client meeting or a training session or whatever to show that we are worthy of being heard. That's what we were talking about. And we were all talking about how often we do it, why we think it's necessary, and that sort of thing. And then all of a sudden, this guy spoke up and he said, I don't understand. Why are you all even doing this? It's a waste of time and it doesn't make a difference. What would happen if you just stopped doing it? I mean, you still get paid either way. So just step up and own your space and stop talking about all of your credentials and leading with your credentials if you don't want to. Right. That's what he said. And do you know what happened? Rage Dana came back. Yes, she did. I was so mad. I remember being shocked and thinking, this guy, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He doesn't understand the burden of being a woman in this space, right? He thinks everything is so simple. Lightsaber, lightsaber, punch, right? Um, but <laughs> I was really angry. I was so angry. I'm, I'm not going to lie. My first initial thought was, what a word that starts with W and rhymes with banker. I was mad. Um, but you know what? Later, when I was reflecting on the session, I kept coming back to what he said. It was like I couldn't get it out of my mind. Almost like the blinders fell off my eyes. And now I have changed the way I introduce myself. I've changed the way that I share. I show up. I don't do the laundry list of credentials. I start speaking and I create my space and my words do the talking. And you know what? If people are concerned about my credentials, they can check them on LinkedIn and that's okay. Um, I'm telling the story because I think sometimes we can be so closed to solutions, especially ones that aren't what we want to hear. Um, we miss things. We miss opportunities to make things better in our community by being radical. Um, and so let, let's not miss those opportunities. So that's it. Those are my five. That's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this session was wonderfully assisted by my co-producer, Rika, my producer, Rika, and my co-producer, Andy. I want to give massive thanks to them. I want to give massive thanks to you as well for sharing all of the things that you did in the chat. I'm actually going to save the chat so that I can go back and read all of it. I can see a comment from Liz saying, if you solve it, you might solve it for others as well. Getting some level of equality change the landscape, but never stop trying to solve. And I think, Liz, you have summed up in a most beautiful way where I land uh, on all of this, right, on valuing each other, on, on sharing, on learning from each other to make the world 
better, better for us all, right? That is it. I am bang on the nose. I am completely out of time. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm handing back over to Rika for next steps. Great. Thanks a lot, Dana. Thank you so much. And thanks to everyone for coming for this session. Um, um, we are going to have a kudos board where you can put all the feedback on the conference and the individual speakers. I, will, I have just posted it on the chat. And uh, we have a uh, next session starting in 14 minutes. Uh, so feel free, free to just to relax or head to the velo space uh, to do a bit of networking. Thank you so much to everybody. <laughs>